you and do put some things up there. Did you research Smith Townships yeah. on this? And it yeah. specifically has those two different. Right. And is there a difference now? Um, part of our solicitors, so we would certainly talk to her. Is there a difference between advertising and sponsorship? So, yeah, there probably is. So, sponsorships it has involved with you, right? So, you should be able to advertise the sponsorship that you would have here at the school. So, yeah, there might be some some areas where you can get that approved. But yeah, just to explain it, that yeah, all the billboards are on a separate ordinance, completely with its own regulations, own rules. And they usually say off premise, and then again, the sign, the sign word instead of on premise. And, and then I guess the, just to, so the board knows connectivity, how that works, how we can put messages from anywhere, yeah. the, the, the warranty, all of those things. Right. So it has a five year warranty, so you don't have to worry about parts or anything for five years. The manufacturer covers that. We give you a one year labor warranty, so we can replace any parts for free for that first year. After that first year, you can have your maintenance guy could replace a part if you wanted to. If you didn't want us to have a service call to come out and replace a part for you, they'll ship it directly to you if you need it. If you need a panel, the sign's built in one by two sections, so that's what they would do if they had a problem with a panel and they couldn't fix it remotely, which a lot of times they can because it's connected to the internet, so they can remote into your sign and look to see what the problem is, and then they can try to refresh the firmware on that one panel, and if they can't, they're going to send you a whole brand. The software is cloud-based software, so it's going to be in the cloud, and as long as you have the username and password, whoever you guys give it out to, they will have access to it, so they can access it from home. And the training, and what we typically say is, you want to do it from a laptop. It's hard to navigate through some of the design elements from either a tablet or a phone, but once you actually make the content and you make a playlist, you can sometimes shuffle the playlist from your so once you actually do some things and get some things established, then yes, you can probably pull out your phone and then just swap out a playlist if you need to. But most people just do it from the computer. So a five-year warranty, but what's the life expectancy of the pixel? <clears throat> 100,000 hours. And 100,000 hours equates to 11 plus years. And that 100,000 hours also is 24-7, 100% brightness, which it's running at 100% brightness now because it's you know battling the sun. Right. There's a built-in brightness sensor, so once it gets dark, it adjusts down to about a third of its capabilities, so that's easy on the eyes. You don't want it running at 100%. That's why townships, some of them have a lot of ordinances in there saying it's too bright. We don't want this like Las Vegas, blah, blah, blah. But as long as your sign is, is like ours and has a built-in brightness sensor, it will. It will automatically adjust, wait on, and you can even adjust how bright you want it once it automatically adjusts, and then you can leave it there. So if 20% or 30% looks good to you, just leave it there and every day it'll adjust down to that brightness until the sun comes back out again. I just, so, <clears throat> I just think if there are people that live right across the street, how bright is that going to be and how is it going to be angled and stuff so it doesn't affect their family that live directly across the street. So we, we haven't determined the, the yeah. placement yet, whether it would be you know, up by the high school or that wide where you're talking about for the elementary sign, Mr. Fusier, or down on that side, so I don't know the orientation of that of that brick wall, but it's certainly something we definitely keep, keep in mind as far as that orientation. I think so we, we, we want to be a good neighbor. Right, that's yeah. Concerning. And that brightness has a lot to do with it. I mean, you know, and you can also a lot of townships. See, churches are a lot of times in residential districts. Mm -hmm. Well, then you go and you look up the residential district for a church, and it says for for the district, and it says you're not allowed digital signs. So the church a lot of times goes to the, the township and says, hey. Or church, we want to advertise like the church down the street, so they say, Well, okay, we'll do shut it off at 11 o'clock every night. That's what I was gonna add, like, good. they could have it turned yeah. off at a certain time, you so it's adjust. not even right. Does it have a time? You can set that up on song. You can time. do it all through song. Once you set it, it'll, it'll <coughs> shut off at that time until you change something. So, before I came in, we were talking that it occurred to me if we did do the brick wall down there, yeah, do you have to listen? Yes, should that be a concern? I don't see with the structure of it, how it's built. Um, a lot of people bring that up, and uh, we have yet to see any vandalism, vandalism, vandalism whatever, um, for the sign because I don't know why they just don't mess with it. But there's built in fins that will, you know, if you throw a bottle or maybe, you know, a rock or something, 
it will withstand that most times. But if it does damage it, I tell everybody, make sure you send the invoice to your insurance company and let them have one. So if it does get vandalized, you know, you can get some replacement. Can you try it out shorts. on yours to see how it works? I usually carry a two-by-four. <laughs> I usually carry a two-by-four, but we did some work on the truck itself, and it's not in the truck. I usually smack it with a two-by-four pretty hard. Yeah, there's a built-in. I have a couple on my truck. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's not very common, and, and a lot of people, or a lot of, uh, not a lot, but some manufacturers put a piece of plexiglass over it to help with that. But then the reflective properties of that plexiglass just just ruin what you have there. Yeah. Because it's reflecting the sun from the other direction and makes it hard to see at certain times of the day, especially the direct sun. So we don't recommend and it could trap the heat, which that needs to bend with. So we don't recommend it at all. So what's the advantage of using your company? Um, we're local. We specialize in digital signs only. And this is an exclusive product from us. We're actually a distributor for the product. So um, we have lots of it in stock, and we really strive on the service end of things to make sure that signs up and for you guys. The problem with it, um, if you get a sign uh, from overseas, which a lot of people are out there peddling, a couple years from now, you need a part. You're going to trust getting it from overseas. It's built in America here, and we have it in stock. So we have it right here in Falls, which is less of an hour. Your Coast Guard approved. Coast Guard approved. For, for that particular sign. For in general. Well, but also for that sign. Yeah. Yeah. We're an approved vendor for that one. We get uh, we got a lot of churches, a lot of schools. We just keep, I'm going to see um, Al Quicker. We're selling signs for Al Quicker. Right. How long will it take to get put up? Um, we tell everybody six to eight weeks after permit approval, but that's usually in a situation that you need. Like I quoted for Stephen, um, it's um, it's because of the fabrication we have to do outside of the digital, with the pole, the cabinet, and all that stuff. So we need some weeks to get that done. But if you just went with a, a digital sign, we already have it. So once we get permit approval, we can actually get you up in a couple of weeks. So, so the uh, quotes that Joe gave me, uh, he gave me quotes for a single-sided sign down on the wall, and the pole sign, which was dual sided with Burgertown above it, in March, I think. Yeah. And then, then you updated the pole sign. Yeah. Give me the other one tomorrow. Right. I'll email that other one for the street sign. And they have, um, you can either buy it outright or they have a leasing uh, option as well. So we just have to look at all the financial as well. Yeah, we have a lease company that offers five year leasing for you guys. You own it for five years. The leasing has nothing to do, doesn't change anything to do with the warranty. The warranty is between you and the manufacturer. So, um, yeah, we can have that. Is it, is it the lease agreement? We can pay it off whenever we want. Yes, we can pay it off soon and sooner than later, and uh, no penalty. It's, it's called acceptance leasing, and they're right out of Moon Township, so they're, they're a local company we like to deal with. And uh, he really specializes in nonprofit organizations like churches, fire department, schools. So he has a, a nice niche. It's really, the software is really easy to just, and they a free lifetime. Uh, support technical support for the life of sign free training for the life of sign so if you want to train when we first get to sign up and then somebody else wanted to be trained a week later it's just a webinar less than an hour so you know do one-on-one -on -one with you if you another month from now you need it it's a training technical support lifetime free for the life of sign and there's a built-in Verizon cell phone modem that the manufacturer covers for the life of sign as well so we had talked when we had first talked, you know, our, our scoreboard down at the stadium yes. uh, on its last legs, and our athletic director is actually in the process of contacting some vendors that are specific to that. <laughs> but I think you had mentioned that this particular product has an app for that would be a scoreboard. Well, no, so this, this manufacturer deals with another company that specializes in making a digital sign into a digital scoreboard. The advantage of that is if you had, a, if you had football, going on one day, soccer going on another day, baseball going on another day, it would change and configure how that you need that, how it would change it all so it's not permanent and it looks like a football. And you know, you can't do soccer correctly. Right. So that then you just buy that software to plug into that. There's there's some other parts you have to buy too, but they specialize in that software. 
So you could make that digital sign into a, into a scoreboard. Yeah. And then with the number of plates, we could look at we have the we have the posts down there and everything ready. Yes. Maybe look at that. So that may be something we'll need. And what I've noticed is we've um, we're uh, quoting a very large scoreboard over at Cranberry for a uh, sports complex. There's no ordinance for their township in Cranberry for scoreboards. So there might be the same situation in your township, and if there is no ordinance, you can advertise on whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have all of the secrets. <laughs> well, this, this is a pretty big uh, sports complex that's getting put together right now, and this was his, we went to the township first, and he wanted it See, he wanted seen by 79. And they said, no, 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 we get, we're full. We can't put up any more billboards. Well, he said, that, you know, now that we checked board. in, now it's a scoreboard. Now it doesn't fit. As long as it's under 50 feet, you can do whatever you want. So that's a consideration, too, if you wanted to do some advertising in between, you know, plays or whatever. And on this, we're not stuck, we're not stuck with, like, boilerplate visuals and things like that. Like, you were able to import the picture of the board or the team sure, whatever you want to import. Kind of like it's it's kind of like, that. yeah, yeah, it's basic. You just bring in a picture and then you lay text over top. And then the text you can add outlines, drop shadows, change the size, placement, move things around. But we also give you, I forgot to mention. So our manufacturer here also tagged, um, teams up with a company called Project Content. That's a software company, or it's a, um, it's a content that has tons and tons of different pictures for you to use for behind, you know, say you don't have a whole lot of pictures to use, and they give you a whole bunch, whether it's, you know, uh, Fourth of July or whatever you want to do. But we also give you a $600 uh, gift card to get custom content made for your school. So I guess when we sell this on you, we connect you with the manufacturer. They start the training with you guys as we're putting things together so that you guys get used to it before we're ever here. So when we get here and plug it in, you guys got content that day. So that's why they connected with Project Content to help you put really creative looking, good looking stuff, because you're new, you, you know I mean? You're new to all this, you don't know really what colors to use and what contrast. They help you with all of that in the training. And then the Project Content software uh, website that I was talking about, they really help you understand how to make it legible and what colors to use, and then they can, like I said, we give you a car so you can get some custom content made. <coughs> so you look pro right out of here. Any other questions? Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Mr. Hill. No problem. I'll come back anytime you need to. I'll give you some cards. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon. Section 4, Reports and Presentations, 4.1, Correspondence. Anything tonight? No correspondence. Awesome. Thank you. 4.2, Administration, Mrs. Baranchua. And thank you for our shirts, Mrs. Baranchua. Sure. Thank you. I'm going to head over to the USONIC board. Um, each one of our teachers has this in their classroom to aid with their instruction. Thanks to Chris for setting that up for us. Um, so I created a presentation on seven mindsets. It's a social emotional platform that we'll be implementing district wide. We purchased shirts for all our staff members. And as I was going around the buildings today, I was uh, overwhelmed by the number of people that were showing their support for this program. So I was extremely excited. When we had our training this summer in service with our teachers, Mr. Pushkar showed them um, that the Maslow hierarchy of needs really needs to be met before our students can start to meet the needs of Bloom's taxonomy where they're becoming critical thinkers and achieving. Um, so, seven mindsets allows us to meet these needs. For instance, um, our adults have the opportunity to work with students to build connections, help the students to feel respect, give them a voice in their future, build confidence, and allows us to meet those needs. This should then, like I said, help with the academic achievement. 
Just in a, as important, our staff has had to deal with trauma throughout the pandemic. So administration wanted to find a program that could uh, meet the needs of our staff as well to promote a more positive mindset, more positive environment for our teachers and our other staff. So the planning process started this summer. We met with Kirk Jones and he helped us plan for the implementation. He then worked with our teachers on August 24th for the in-service. They were given time, the teachers, the past week to explore the platform. And then student implementation took place today, which I have to admit there are some glitches. When our teachers went on, the platform wasn't working. Uh, Mr. Fadden reached out to Kirk immediately. They identified there's an issue. But I feel like our educators did what they do all the time, all the time and they adapted well. Our administrators had provided hard copies of the plans for the teachers, hard copies of activities. The teachers were able to find the YouTube videos. So I felt like they did an excellent job to make sure that our students were introduced to the seven mindsets. Each Monday, it's called Mindset Monday. Each month is one of the seven mindsets. This month is everything is possible. And then each week, there's a theme. So dream big, embrace creativity, think positively, act and adjust. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is we send out Act 48 forms to our teachers and part of that is getting feedback as to whether our um, different programs that we offer for in-service were successful or not. And I had 81 responses and there was not a negative comment by the, by the teachers. So I uh, had some of those comments and I pulled them up here and quoted some of the teachers. Um, loved everything about this training, hope is followed through with. That's definitely our plan to continue this throughout the year. Um, I think as a district, if we could incorporate this into our instruction weekly, we'll see a difference in our students. Our students deserve to feel heard, and they will feel heard if the school does what they can to educate students on mental health. I know in my many years here at the district, I definitely, I loved our presenter. I love what he presented to us and I had a lot of positive feedback. One more thing, September 15th is DOT Day. We celebrated it last year. We're gonna celebrate it again this year. It goes hand in hand with the seven mindsets. Uh, encourages our students to be creative, brave, compassionate, and that definitely goes with that platform. So we'll be celebrating that this Thursday. Lastly, I want to thank you all for your support, especially wearing your shirts. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Baranchula. Several teachers did, I've seen them around town and said this was the absolute best presentation that they've ever sat through. <laughs> Will you log me out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm only I, I will one when of I'll, these. <laughs> yeah, I will when I'm Okay, thank time. you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Barichua. This is Mankey. Oh, good evening, everyone. So it may seem cliche to say that it takes a village, but BAC is truly feeling the love this past month. So I want to share some good news with you. Uh, Card My Yard, who uh, set up the BAEC Candyland sign in front of the building, they donated some extra days to us, so I appreciate that they did that. Um, for the amount of money that we spent on that, so I thank them. I have to thank Zach Chalinski and 22 Concrete, Chris Holmes and JC Howard for donating the concrete for the Devil's Den Literacy Garden that we're building outside of the second grade wing. Dr. Leaf and Tony Taz had an innovation grant last year, and so it is beautiful. If you haven't had a chance to take a look, please do. It's excellent work. I'd also like to thank Zach Chalinski and his company because on the first day we had donuts and coffee that were never ending. So <laughs> 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 teachers were carrying cups of coffee for the afternoon, so thank you. Uh, the United Way in Washington donated care kits for our students. So we have two big plastic bins of care kits that Mrs. Barantua picked up this last week for us. Uh, Dr. Del Bonai, Vanessa Geary, Steve Burns, and the Seco family 
generously made a donation for our students at the Scholastic Book Fair that will be upcoming. Uh, we thank them for that. Uh, I'd like to thank B, uh, who came in, B Deer, a bus driver, who came in this last week and she did presentations in the classroom on bus ridership. She did an excellent job. I have to thank all the community uh, because our parents and our students and our bus drivers and our employees so look forward to the elementary theme, which is Candyland, and they dress for it. So all the t-shirts that were made, uh, all the decorating, and getting the kids ready for school and excited. So we thank everyone for participating. So you'll see PAEC Candyland gear all throughout the school year. We're excited about that. Best kept secret all summer. Yes, it was. And I threw everybody <laughs> off with posting about the Wizard of Oz. You did. Yes, you, you did. did. Everybody <laughs> off. <laughs> And lastly, uh, we had an election of our fifth grade ESOL leadership team, and I'd like to congratulate those students that we'll be working with this school year. In Mr. Foster's homeroom, Mason Lombardi, Samantha Lombardi, and Corinne Reitweiser. In Mrs. Harris's homeroom, Elena Budner and Kenneth Sahavalam. In Mrs. Six's homeroom, Drew Binkini, Kylie Burgoyne, and Grady Kuzier. And in Mrs. Fittick's classroom, Tyler Klaus and Colton Spiker made this year's ESOL team, and they were elected by their peers. So we're looking forward to having them, and they have started their responsibilities this past week by starting the morning announcements and hanging the flag, collecting all the attendance, the lunch count, so they're in training at this point. So thank you. Thanks for a wonderful start to the school year, and thanks for supporting the Seven Mindsets. Thank you, Mrs. Mankey. I um, want to give a shout out to some of your staff. I've heard phenomenal things about the new kindergarten teachers. Absolutely. And I've heard Mrs. Cozares has been a phenomenal mentor for them. Oh, but she's been awesome. And I know I had I got to watch her during the COVID times. <laughs> yes. but she was amazing mm -hmm. online as, as we were all kind of struggling through yes. that. So I just thought Thank you give so much for sharing. Out. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mankey. Mr. Fadden. Good evening everyone. Um, similar sentiment that Mrs. Mankey had it's been a great start to the school year. Um, we did launch our seven mindsets today. It was interesting, no doubt to say the least, because uh or Marie and I were walking around the room. The technology was interesting because internet worked great in some rooms and they were doing it straight from the slides. Some rooms had internet, but they couldn't access that. For, they weren't able to access the web, website, so they're using the, the hard copies that we had. And some rooms just couldn't access anything, so they combined with, the, with other classes. So it was interesting to see how the teachers got it done today, uh, but they definitely got the seven mindsets off to a positive start with the students. Um, we had our first pep rally um, last Friday. Once again, it's something that we do at the beginning of the year to introduce all of our fall sports teams. Um, it was a great kickoff for their season as well. Um, it was just a great start to the school year. Um, Mrs. Schaefer and I have gotten around to see the new curriculum that's being implemented by the teachers. There's a good start with that. We have several teachers teaching new classes. A lot of positive things happening in the middle of Spec High School. We just thank you for your support. Thank you. I have, I have a shout out for one of your staff members too, Mr. Fadden. I don't know if you heard on um, the day they were doing physicals at the school yes. for the and the website crashed, it didn't work. Shelby John called every parent and walked them through. I don't know how, I bet she worked 14 hours that day. I don't know how she did it. Shelby does an awesome job. That doesn't amazing. surprise me that she She called did. me. I was like, oh, poor Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Mr. Fadden. Mrs. Schaefer. Thank um, As you may know, part of my transition to the assistant principal's position is taking on a supervisory role with regard to the faculty at the middle high school. This past week, I began walkthroughs with Brian as he introduced me to this new responsibility. Brian has been guiding me through the process, offering reflective opportunities and feedback. Additionally, I will say that it is very refreshing to be left in the classroom, um, even for a short period of time. For those of you that don't know what walkthroughs are, there's just a 10 minute snapshot of us going into Um, our teachers are providing engaging instruction while our students are showing enthusiasm for learning. It's an overall positive feeling getting to experience these opportunities and I'm thoroughly looking forward to learning more about formal observations and getting back into the classroom throughout the school year. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Burton. <coughs> Hi everybody. Um, it's 
been a busy start to this school year. We've been working hard in my department transitioning people into kindergarten, into the district. We had quite a few um, special ed students move back into the district or into the district. And then just those students transitioning between elementary and high school. So it's been busy with that. Um, yeah, nobody mentioned it, and I'm surprised. Thank you, Mrs. Burton. Thank, I know you're so crazy busy, though. Thank you. He's quite a good drummer as well, Mr. Burton. I've got my best. Yeah. I've got lots of practice. I heard that. Three times. Mm -hmm. Three times. Three times. No, twice. I was twice. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, we all missed it. It was a video. Why wasn't that on YouTube, Dad? <laughs> Next, next, Peter, we probably weren't allowed to record that. <laughs> Actually, he, he did the he recorded students that were recording it. He did have a comment a comment to them about only putting small snapshots. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Mr. Navidakis. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's been a slow start. Since <laughs> 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 everyone else knew. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy in... You know, they were talking about including everybody, and with these boards, it was nice because we got to include everybody. Every teacher, art, music, gym, and I think that was some of the sentiment we heard from them is that they felt included. They were typically, when they, we had projectors, they, they weren't part of that. So, you know, that, that was a, it's a nice thing that they are part of that. And, you know, I had a teacher in the high school ask for it, you know, because there wasn't one in the gym, and we have one, so we're going to put one in the gym as long as they put it away and you know, keep it out of, of harm's way but you know it's that nice part uh, and uh, the extra support I have to Viral Broster is the, the tech support and he's been awesome even to the point where I got a thank you today or a shout out to him because he was there within 15 minutes working on something so it, it's nice to have that extra support uh, we're working on laptops right now the remaining high school teachers that didn't receive a laptop last year are getting them this week and then the following week or two elementary all everyone's getting a new laptop so and then we'll transition them into that but there's so much going on and, you know it's busy time and i'm glad we have these this is my after probably october 1st after i get my child account or all our new october stuff done for pins this is going to be my focus and getting in the room and it, we have had some hiccups Wi-Fi, there's a Chrome box on the back. It's basically a Chromebook on the back. And there's uh, the, the, the software that comes with it. They also can push from their iPad and their, and their laptop to that as well. And it's just, it's a lot, and they've had a lot, and uh, it's now trying to support them and you know, to keep it going. So it's, you know, look at this, so <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mrs. Slate, we just want to confirm, there, I guess, were some concerns about the buses at the field. Will they be parking behind, like, along the tracks, I would say. I don't even know if there's still train tracks back there. Will we, <laughs> can you tell them to, to back those? They were going to back them in there because that was the deal that we had made to put them there. But when they got there, the person that was there told them they weren't to be there, and they put them clean out at the other end of the field. and put them up against the fence line with the doors facing the other opposite way. Okay. So the, the, the original plan was to put them 
back from in before the opposing team came, so they were because they can all fit in there. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. Today I heard we may not have buses more dominant this week. I don't know. Okay. Well, let us know when you hear. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next, Mrs. Graham. Mr. Thank you. You know, I, I don't know why it always surprises me at the, end of, at the end of every school year you sit down at your desk the day after commencement and you say, okay, I've got the whole summer in front of me. And then you blink and, and the first day of school is here. And it takes a tremendous amount of effort to launch a school year. I mean, and all hands on board from administration to the school board to the teachers and the custodians and just is snapshot. If you can take it and just watch it over the period of the summer, the way it goes. It's incredible. The way it's all come together, it really felt for the first time too in several years like it's the start of a normal school year. The new normal you had seen about COVID earlier. Uh, we're very fortunate, uh, uh, off and running. I, I see good things ahead of us and uh, a lot of initiatives. Uh, Mrs. Mankey shared with me that I think she had a teacher candidate come through uh, interviews and saying that, you know, looking around, saying, you know, and, and from a, uh, it's very familiar with a, a quote unquote big name school district and said they don't have the kinds of things we have here. So so we, we really do have, it's a hidden gem, and, and that's what our, our, our goal is, to, to make sure that uh, people know that. If, I don't know if you ever noticed, but uh, and you may, you probably don't, but when Mrs. Mankey puts a, an advertisement on the, uh, for, for PA educator for when we're for a teacher, um, she promotes us and promotes the area because people don't realize, and, and uh, I think good things are ahead. So I want to thank everybody for that. Thank you. I want to give you a shout out too. I heard you've been hanging out in the cafeteria and visiting some classrooms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. And oh. Oh, I did not mention we did have an executive session uh, for legal uh, reasons at the beginning of the meeting, and we will uh, not have one at the end. Right. May I have a motion to approve all administrative reports as presented? Second. Mrs. Secco, with a second by Mr. Price. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Section 5, Budget and Finance, Mr. Kuzier. 5.1, a motion to ratify the list of bills for September 22 as presented. As a motion. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 5.2, Financial Statement. A motion to accept the financial statements as presented and place on file for our that's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, questions. Mm -hmm. Questions. Sorry. That's okay. Um, that, uh, that line item I just clicked off of it, uh, the extra the additional grant we have above and beyond the budgeted amount, can you explain what that is? It's the physical safety and mental health grant. So the physical safety and mental, mental health grant we've not received yet. Um, we've applied for, and that was the extra, if you remember back in August or July, I guess, when the governor's budget came out, there was a little bit over $100,000 um, for physical safety and a little over $100,000 for the mental health end of it. So uh, we had to put together a proposal and on the physical physical end of it, it's equipment, so we're going to cameras and things like that, um, and on the mental health end, the social work services. Okay, all right, I, I, sorry, I didn't know exactly what it was called. Is that a sign of bell? I, I, I think it's it kind of like that. as long as you put your application in and it's in a timely manner. Now that there may be some revisions needed, but yeah, we should. It should be a sign bill. Yeah, just my comment to the board about the uh, the sign. Um, I think it's long overdue. This is my personal opinion. Um, and I know we have some savings in the maintenance department, if not having a second maintenance uh, person for two and a half ish, three months, whatever it's going to be. So I don't know if we could just fit it in there. For the rest of the school year, you know, it's probably going to be until you know December, maybe November, December before it actually gets we approve it and install it. So maybe you have like six months, seven months of pain. So some savings there, but probably four fit the budget for next year and pay it off this time next year. That's my thought process. But you're talking the digital sign. Yeah, I mean, whatever Do we, you whatever we decide location, whatever we right. decide another time. Do you feel, Kip, that, that the digital sign, and we would also need a sign directing to both schools? Yeah, but and that's, why? I think that's just a cheap. So, you, yeah, but you, you're thinking we need two, right? No, 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 my thought was, you know, for, yeah, that's for years there's always been a sign to yeah. point people to the high right. school. There's never been a sign to point people here. 
It already makes sense. Right. Why we have one? We, have, we don't put oh, no, a sign yeah. for the second building. So the new executive director of the CTC agreed yeah, to right. create a sign for us. He, okay. he uh, answered me today. So he's going to have that sign. His students make it. And I, I sent him a picture of what yeah, we have and in. where we want one, and we'll see what his rendering comes and we'll have that. Yeah. But that's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, something that's basically mm -hmm. what we have. No, it totally makes sense. Yeah. yeah. If you're not familiar with the campus, you don't know where you're going. Yeah, there's been yeah. numerous times where I've bumped into people come up here and they pull down here and should be pulling up here if they just didn't. Oh, that's the so first so drive they saw. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could also, yeah, there's been times where there's been people pulling down here not knowing that there's an entrance up here. Right. Baseball softball. Right. Maybe we need to sign up there, too. Or one's out here. here. You could yeah. put a sign right down by the road. Right. Baseball, softball field. What's that song? Sign? Sign? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's my thought regarding the sign. Number one, it's needed. And number two, I, I think that we should try to work to fit it in. It would be nice to come up to the current there. century. Yeah. It may have been there since the 80s. I haven't been there since. It just looks <laughs> it does, does it was look there when my boy graduated in 72. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone opposed? Motion carries. 5.3 tax assessment appeal of a motion to retain Frank Arcuri. Is that correct? Yes. Arcuri. To represent the school district's perspective tax assessment okay. appeals filed for parcel numbers 570 023 13 00 002 and 570 023 13 00 001 due to a conflict of interest in the solicitor's office. That is a motion. Thank you. Second by Mr. Price. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? I just had a question. Um, is there supposed to be two numbers at the end of that second parcel number? Does it matter? Uh, it's just it's just saying zero two at the end, and it's missing on the other parcel. Right. There is. Okay. So all, they're all supposed to have 16 numbers. So the one should, should yeah, the second one is yeah, the, the second one should be five seven zero zero two three one three zero 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 one dash zero one. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then the other one. Yeah. Do I need to reread that? Anybody have a problem with that adjustment being made? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Anyone opposed? Nope. Motion carries. Section six, education. Mrs. Lemon. Good evening. Section 6.1, the health and safety report. Nothing at this time to report. Uh, 6.2, the enrollment report. It can be found on four docs. Under 6.3, faculty and student handbooks. I would like to make a motion, please, to approve the elementary faculty and student handbooks for the 22-23 school year. They That's are attached. I'm sorry. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any questions? Motion carries. And under 6.4, donation slash disposal, I'd like to make a motion, please, to permit the donation and disposal of the listed outdated items as listed below. It's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Section 7, Personnel, Mr. Price. Under Personnel, the disclaimer is there naturally. 7.2 deals with resignations. Uh, recommended actions to accept with regret the resignations as listed for the following personnel. Rachel Spence, Jody Ward, and Kaylee O'Brannovich. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. 7.3 employment. Number one, motion to ratify the following employment items. Kristen Snyder to the position of cross-country head coach as of August 1st, pending receipt of all paperwork, and B, Teresa Pierce to the position of full-time bus driver as of August 29th, and C, Ken McKinney to the position of full-time bus driver as of August 29th, 2022. That's a motion. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. A motion number two is a motion to approve the following employment items. Uh, Donald Ware to the position of full-time maintenance technician with an anticipated start date of September 19, 2022, pending 
in receipt of all paperwork. That's a motion. It's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Mrs. Secco, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 7.4 deals with salary adjustments. Number one is a motion to ratify the evaluation results of the superintendent of schools, Stephen Pushkar, and the salary schedule as presented as outlined in section five of his contract as of July 1, 2022. That's a motion. It's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, second Mrs. Secco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Not just for this one, but can we do a question before we vote, just so in case anybody does have questions, mm -hmm. instead of questions after. Okay, moving along. Motion number two is a motion to ratify the salary schedule as presented for the Hillman Field Manager. That's a motion. Any questions? You need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. A second. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Seven, excuse me, 7.5 deals with reclassifications. Motion number one is a motion to ratify the following reclassification personnel items. Uh, Judy Toomey to the position of full-time custodian as of August 22nd, 22. Uh, Nancy Thornton, custodian according to administrative bulletin number 14, effective September 6th. Tanya Inman to the position of head assistant court effective September 6th. That's a motion. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. Any questions? All in favor? Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion number two is a motion to approve the following reclassification personnel items. Cindy Monick to the position of 10 month secretary effective September 13th, 22. And Cheryl Christie, 10 month secretary, according to administrative bulletin number 18, effective September 15th, 2022. That's a motion. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number 76 is additional compensation. The recommended motion to approve the listed additional compensation items. 22-23 school year as presented. Uh, these deal with induction mentors, uh, A, B, C, and D. That's a motion for one year. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven is a memorandum of understanding. The motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between the Burtonstown Area Educational Support Personnel Association and the Burgessstown Area School District pertaining to the positions of inspector mechanic and maintenance technician. That's the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Burgoyne. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 7.8 deals with substitutes. Motion to ratify the substitute list for the 22-23 school year as presented. Let's go through A, deals with bus driver, B, cafeteria, C, custodial, D, paraprofessional, and E, teacher. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number two is a motion to approve the substitute list for the 22-23 school year as presented for the cafeteria. Uh, Teresa Burgoyne and Chantil Martin. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? I abstain. Got that, Morris? Motion carries. Thank you. Section 8, Athletics and Related Activities, Mr. Metallic. Uh, the athletic report is available online. Uh, Section 8.2, the schedules of, for fall sports are also available online. 8.3, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the revised athletic trainer agreement between NovaCare Rehab Incorporated and Burtistown Area School District for athletic training services as amended to reduce the non-solicitation clause to one year. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Burgoyne. Any questions? All in favor? 
Any opposed? Motion carries. Just so you, just so you all know, they, I reached out to Mother Kara while we were facing there. We were going to choose the Olivia Beer. That's right. Thank you. Uh, under 8.4, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the license agreement with theatrical rights worldwide in the amount of $22,550 for three performances of the Spring Musical. Uh, that's a motion. $2,500. Not $22,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And there is a note to please keep the name of the musical confidential. Please. Section 9, Transportation. Mr. Zach Shalinsky. Uh, 9.1 transportation reports can be found online. 9.2 school transportation agreement. Uh, motion to approve the school transportation agreement as presented with parent guardian permission. Uh, one, Ben Froats and Joey Vigilotti, teachers, to transport students to Washington Hospital in Washington, PA, on the following dates October 18th, November 15th, December 20th, 2022, February 21st, March 21st, a date to be determined. April and May 16th, 2023 for the Teen Outreach Program Advisory Board. That's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Secco. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Section 10, Buildings and Grounds, Mr. Burgoyne. 10.1, uh, Buildings and Grounds report is online. 10.2, uh, um, I would like to make a motion to permit the disposal of miscellaneous district office furniture that is beyond repair or no longer functional. Do we have a second? Okay. Second, Mr. Price. Any questions? Question. Really not related to this. But a number of years ago, we talked about, I think it was before the Sports Bar Series, we talked about getting the company in and going through our junk. Uh, oh, my God, there's so much. Yeah. Our junk, some right. treasure. Right? <laughs> and then we'd be able to get something out of it. Right. And that was I know we tried ago. doing an online auction. I can't remember where, where it went. It, it, yeah, we it, tried something. I mean, it wasn't going to be lucrative by any means. Right. So. Let's just get rid of it. Yeah. So. We'll look back into that. Yeah, I can't remember the, there was an outfit that came There was a company that we yeah. we, we so put before it, here? it was right at the beginning of me being here. Okay. We took pictures of things and put it on the, and then I think we got like a penny a table or something. Yeah. Yeah. So we can. Uh, oh, well, we'll it's, it's, it's not worth the effort then. Well, the main thing concern that too was the fact of if something would happen to that stuff, you know, it could yeah. become a liability because it's like it's just a house. Yeah, I, I get it. Well, that's an option too. So, as long as we, um, as long as we have, you know, a motion to get rid of it, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Put it back on our radar. Yeah. 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 Well, Popping my head. Find a way. Yeah. How much of this metal you can see? Right. Put it on the strap there. Yeah, it's a little good, but it all, it all need disassembled, you know, chairs and stuff, so. But, yeah, we can look, look, look into that again. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Section 11, Western Area Career and Technology Center, Mrs. Secco. Uh, I'd like to announce um, some exciting news that we now have a new director, um, Mr. Michael Milanovic, and new principal, uh, Mr. Patel. They um, hit the ground running in August and have brought uh, a new sites, new excitement, and a lot of fun to um, the staff down there. It's um, like just a whole new beginning. The new chapters, new everything. Um, they have reached out to all school districts and invite us to actually have one of our board meetings down there where they will provide us dinner. So if you would like to do that, we can make arrangements anytime this year to have our board meeting there. Except for a few weeks of Christmas one that we have the only one that we want. So that way we would be able to give you a tour, show you some of our things, and some of our students can show off some of their stuff to you. So exciting new administration, exciting new things going on, and I will keep you all updated on it. Thank you. Section 12, food service. Mr. Kuzer. Uh, there's nothing to approve the food service report available online. I do think it's, it's, it says that it's supposed to be a comparison of August 2021, 2022, August 22, 2023, but I think it's just last year's data. So, but regardless, there's only two days. I would like to add that as a parent of six 
graders and about 10 of them that had a group discussion about this yesterday, the food is fantastic. They love going up there and having selections. No offense to the elementary. <laughs> but the fact that they can well, go up and they're excited to... I think you call them as the elementary too since they're able to get salad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's so a huge actually, difference yeah, and it was kind of cute at a, it became a discussion of the pizza compared to school at a party yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, can I put it in my report this week? Yeah. 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 So so when's when's the start date? Yeah. October first. That's what I thought. Uh, the, all, all that we received was a memo from the governor's office that said if we don't have any of the yeah. details. Yet. Should we have at the schools? I know in the past they did like the quick grab and go breakfast in the front of the school, like when the kids walk in up there. I didn't know if they had it down here. Yeah. Are they still going to do we that? We do it. We do it. Yeah, that, that makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, I asked my kids, and they're like, well, I don't see it, but that's not to say it wasn't there. It's right when they open the doors, it's right there. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I can't say it wasn't, they didn't see it. <laughs> exactly. Section 13, Student Discipline, Mrs. Seco. Nothing to report. Section 14, Policy, Mr. Taz. Section 15, Old Business, New Business. Oh, question. What is the process for any sort of maintenance work on whether we decide to outsource it or do it in here? So such as the power washings. We paid somebody $4,400 to power wash the bleachers, which I feel like is something that could easily be done by our own staff. Who decides that? Somebody, something that Craig has to ask you, or he just doesn't want to know? No, we have a conversation with Craig. Uh, Craig actually reports directly to Jamie, okay. and then to me. So that's how we had that conversation. We also went through the building somewhere else. Uh, maybe I'm not sure if that was on our agenda or not one of the agendas. Um, as a, on something like that, it, it sometimes comes down to, do we have the people uh, to do it? Especially at this summer where we didn't have a, a maintenance person. I don't know that we had the high pressure washer uh, to do that. I remember the discussion. It was it basically came down to the fact we didn't have a maintenance person. But we knew it needed power washed all summer long, so we had all summer to do it. We couldn't find it. But I know, but that's a, a one day job. That we couldn't find one day for somebody to save us $4,400 that we had outsourced. That's right. I mean, that, I'm you, sure there could be other things around here that could take a pause for a day to where we could try to save some money. Well, perhaps. Um, you know, I will say that it took more than one day. I don't know the, the pressure of the pressure washer, how that comes. That's what they do uh, for business. I can tell you that we had all hands on deck underneath the bleachers for several days uh, and got several dumpsters full of trash from underneath there. So, yeah, it's a division of, you know, lining up what should be done and, and kind of taking little bites and things out of it. Um, other projects that happen a lot of times, especially with the heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and things like that, we will see or I'll tell you uh, it's been outsourced or whatever. That's just, you know, because we don't have that expertise, even if we did have a maintenance person. So there is a maintenance budget for things like that. Out of curiosity, like, I know that there's, I've seen other stadiums like where they put like a mesh thing, they even installed it themselves to keep garbage from going down in there. Is that something that we can maybe look into at another time? Yeah, I don't, I know that when Craig was here, not Craig, um, He had looked at the way that the fencing is just even to kind of get underneath there is difficult. It is, uh, yeah. You know, and I think there's already some trash that has accumulated just in the first few line teams and things like that. It has probably been 10, 15 years, maybe more. Than we get it. I don't know if there's some sort of mesh that we put there. I don't, I don't know if they did it themselves or if they have somebody, but it was just like a, right. like something almost like you put it, it looked like something you put over a gutter. So anything under twenty thousand, it doesn't really have to go. Well, okay, there's two different ways. Okay. First of all, if it's a service like a cleaning service, you, you get proposals, but technically you don't have to bid. Okay. The things that you technically have to bid are things that you're purchasing, and that includes the value of the labor to install. Mm -hmm. you know. um, so if it's twenty thousand, has to have a formal bid unless it's a co-star's project, a co-star's mm -hmm. item, or a, there's another program like that called PEPA. It's 
big big list. Between, um, I may get these numbers wrong, between 10 and 20, you don't have to do a formal bid, but you have to solicit at least three proposals. You have to have some sort of spec, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you have to solicit three proposals, and it, or three responses, three quotes. If you don't get three, that's fine. You just have to keep a record of the fact that you tried to get three from people that do that or provide that. And again, my number might be off here, and under 10, you can just do it. Okay. Any other old business, new business? Section 16, le legislation. No, nothing there. We have a motion to recess and reconvene this meeting until September 26 at 6.30 p.m. in the elementary library to consider ratification of the successor collective bargaining agreement with the BAEA if possible at that time. Second. Well, I, need a, I need a motion. 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 You were motion. Second. motion. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. See us hopefully on the 26th.